I want to see one of something. All right. I guess I guess there is exceptions. I may not want to see just one of something, but if I want to pinpoint and just want to see one thing, one member of a particular entity, I better be passing the primary key, right? Because the primary key is what uniquely identifies it. So, on my detail page, between the listing of polls and the specific poll, what do I need to pass as part of the query string? When you need those categories. Will the category uniquely identify a poll? The poll that I want to see. Will the category ID uniquely identify the poll I want to see? No, because I can have multiple polls for technology. I'll pass the poll ID. The poll ID will allow me to pull the one specific poll ID that I want. Now, I can then use that poll ID to pull the category for that poll and to pull the results for that poll. But what I want to see on that second string uh, screen is I just want to see one poll. So I can pass that on the query string. Query string looks like this, always. Starts with a question mark, has a name of a parameter, an equal sign, and then a value. There can be more than one item passed on the query string. And if there is, they're separated by ampersands. So if I wanted to pass something else on the query string, like maybe I wanted to pass the instructor ID, for example. I could do something like this. Ampersand, the next field, an equal sign, and the next value. So I have a set of pairs. Attribute name, or field name, equal sign, value. Then I have an ampersand field equals value, ampersand field equals value. And I can do that for as many things as I want to pass from page A to page B. That's one way that I can pass something and I can remember in an application. All right? So, to answer the question, gee, how does the server know that I clicked on this link versus this link, because both of these links, if we look at the URL down at the bottom, both of these links go to the same page. So how does it know to display one page versus the other? It knows because it passes the ID of the course that you want to see on the query string. So we're going to do the same thing except with a poll ID. Okay? So let's go and let's make that link on our HTML page. Alright? So I'm sitting here looking at this, and I have to decide what I need to change here, right? What did I say I wanted to change? I wanted to have the word results as part of this grid, all right? And that results, I want to be a hyperlink, and I want it to point to the particular ID that, that I want to view. I don't really need to pull any new data, right? I simply need to format the way it's displayed. In other words, I, I have pulled all the data that I need in my data source. Let's look what I'm pulling. I'm pulling everything from the poll table. So I have everything I need, right? I have the poll ID there. The word results is simply hard-coded, so I don't need to pull that from any database table. So I don't need to change my query at all. I'm simply changing the way it's going to look. Instead of simply the name of the, the poll, there's going to be the name of the poll, and there's going to be a link that says results, and it's going to pass the ID on the query string. And I have the ID, because I'm retrieving everything from the table. Okay. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to edit. I'm going to edit columns. And I'm going to add a hyperlink field. All right. Now, what do I want the text of the hyperlink field to be? I want it to be the word results, right? Because that's what I said I wanted the text to be. I wanted 
the link to have the name of results. What do I want the URL to look like? All right. Notice I didn't pick the navigate URL. I'll give you a, a, a sort of a, a tip off in advance. I would do that if the link was the same for everything. If it was like a help link that took me to a help page. All right. But the link isn't going to be the same for everyone. I'm passing the ID as part of the link. So I'm going to put in here results.aspx. And we're going to come back to this because this isn't the complete answer. So if you're, if you're taking notes, leave a space to indicate I'm going to, I'm going to fill in something here. All right, because we're not quite done yet. All right. So, but there's the link. All right. I'm now going to go in and I'm just going to make a dummy page just so that my link doesn't fail, called results. So let me run this now. So I pick technology. I did something wrong. Let me go back. Yeah, ultimately I'm not going to put that in. Yeah. All right, we'll do we'll do this for now. I, I we we still are going to need to go back and and change this, but yeah, well, okay, we'll go and do that. All right, now we go and run it. Now is the link. I click on that, I go to results ASPX. Alright, well and good. But we're not passing the ID yet, which we know we, we you know we know that by now the second page doesn't know which link we clicked. It just knows that we clicked a link. So we're gonna have to pass that information to the second page. Yes. I, I, I'm not using a master page in this example. Well, I don't have any master pages in this example. Oh, you don't? Okay. Yeah. But if you did? If you did, if you, if you wanted it linked to the master page, you would. If you didn't, you, you, don't, you don't have to. But typically, if you're creating a master page, all your pages are going to link to it. All right. So, let's go and make this work for real now. Because the missing ingredient is that we have to somehow tell this link to be different for each one to include. And that's where we get into where I was before. Not the navigate URL, but the data navigate URL format string. Now, notice what I put here. Under format, I put results.aspx, id equals, and then in curly brackets, I put zero. All 
up to the curly brackets, it should be pretty obvious what that is, right? I'm, I'm forming the URL. The URL is results.aspx id equals, all right? So I'm going to pass the ID. What does the curly bracket zero mean? The curly bracket zero corresponds to the first item on this list that I defined. So I could pass multiple items on the query string. In this particular case, I only need to pass one. All right. And which one do I need to pass? I need to pass the poll ID. So the value of the poll ID for this row is going to get substituted for that curly bracket, zero curly bracket. If there's other stuff I needed to pass, I could have ampersand instructor equals curly bracket one and then have instructor name that I'm going to pass. All right. But in this case, I only need to pass the one field. So I formatted the string to say my query string is going to contain the word ID equals curly bracket zero. That indicates that I'm going to pass a value on the query string. This list then defines what's going to be put in curly bracket zero, the value of the poll ID. So now let's look at this. Notice as I mouse over, we can see the link. The link is a little different for each one. It shows the ID. Uh, for better look for it, we can actually view the source. And we can see a href. One says ID equals one. One says ID equals three. One says ID equals two. That's my, that is one of my tips for, for debugging any kind of server-side programming. Don't forget to view the HTML that it actually creates. All right? Because that tells you what the server did. So if I put something wrong in there, all right, let's say I forgot to put the equal sign in, in, in there. I would then see ID2. And then I would say, oh, okay, I forgot the equal sign. It may be hard in your code to find that, but when you see the results, that sort of points in the right direction. Now, oddly enough, now I can get rid of that navigate URL, I believe. Again, we're calling the results page, and we're passing on the query string a number one. Questions about this so far? Yes? When you started with the zero, it just automatically numbered the rest of them in there? You know what I mean? Because you, right now, you just, you, know, you just define that the one string is going to be zero. And, but then I saw one... Well, well, keep in mind, understand what that zero means. That zero is not the value of the ID. All right? What that zero means is, notice I have two things going here. I have the format string and I have the fields. This is field zero. So it will get put in wherever there's a curly bracket zero. So the value of the poll ID, regardless of what it is, gets put into there. If I had a second thing, maybe I wanted to pass the poll name to the second page. I could go in and say, what did I call the poll name? Question, poll question, question, just. If I wanted to pass the value of the question on the query string, I could say Q equals curly bracket 1, where 1, element 
zero's poll ID. Again, we always count starting with zero uh, in programming. Element one, then, is question. So now if I went and ran it, notice my link passes two items on a query string, one of them being the ID, one of them being the question. But I don't need to pass the question. I just need to pass the ID. So the 0 and the 1 correspond to the elements in this list of fields. 0 means put the first field, put the value of the first field for each row in that. 1 means put the value of field 1 in that. Is that separated by a comma? It's separated by a comma, yeah. Or you can hit the little three dots and you can get a numeric or a, a list that you put one on each line. All right, so we run this. We've done part A of our job here. That is, we've gotten to the second page, the ID, it needs to, it needs to do its thing. We haven't done the second part of our job. That is, make that second page, pluck that ID out of the query string, and use it in a query. All right. This is also going to be a parameterized query, just like we did here. All right. We have a query to, to pull the list of polls here, right? based on what? Based on the category ID that's picked in a dropdown. We want to do an identical thing here, except when we click on this, we want to pull the poll that corresponds to the poll ID listed in the query string. And there's another subtle difference here. And that is, there can be multiple polls per category. There's only going to be one poll that has this ID. All right? So I probably don't need a table to show that. All right? Because there's only going to be one by definition, because I'm passing the primary key. All right. So. Let's go in and let's build and let's make that second page for real. I'm going to do this in steps. I'm going to go to my results page. I'm going to go in, I'm going to drag over the two things I need. One's going to be the SQL data source. I'm going to configure it. What connection do I want to use? I want to use the connection string. The one that I defined and I put in my web config file. Next. And then the first time you just go to set up any data source, it's going to, you have to go through the process of setting up. You have to go through and set up the, the, for the first one, yeah. And then every one from then you just pick that one. I'm going to specify a custom SQL statement. I'm going to say select star from poll. Do I want a where clause on this? What if I didn't put a where clause on this? What would I get? Every poll. Do I want every poll? No. no. I want one poll. So what's my where clause going to look like? Where poll ID, where poll ID equals what? Question mark. Equals something. <laughs> All right. We're going to so we're uh, question mark. That's a parameter. That means we're this is going to get supplied at runtime. I'm not supplying it now. All right. So when you see a question mark, that means I'm going to supply this value at runtime. So I click next. Oh, I'm glad you're paying attention. I will periodically make mistakes like that in class to check to see if you're paying attention. You guys did well this time. Congratulations. All right. Now I have to say where I'm going to get the value from. What did I do before? I said the value is coming from a control. 
right? Yeah. This time it's going to come from the query string. Now, what's the name of the field on the query string? It's ID. Now, I deliberately did this. I made the name on the query string ID and not poll ID. Why? Because you just need to match up the name that you created the link with and the name that you're going to pull out of the query string. So it doesn't have to correspond precisely to the name in the database. Obviously, you want to keep it close so it's pretty clear, but I didn't have to call it poll ID when I created the link, and I don't have to call it poll ID now. So I call it ID, contest my query. If I put in one for my parameter, well, it pulled up poll number one. All right, looks good. All right, now I can go, and I'll be good, and I'll change this to poll, to SQL data source poll, to give it a meaningful name. Now I need to display that, because remember, this is just retrieving the data. We're not showing it, all right? There's always the two components. There's always the behind-the-scenes database access component, and then there is the user interface. I'm going to show it on the screen component. And that's going to be done via... We used a grid view before. Yes. We will use a details view now. What's the difference between the two? A grid view is better suited when what? In a the form of tables. Pardon me? In the form of tables. Yeah, it will, it will display in the form of a table. In other words, if my results contain multiple rows. So in the case in the previous screen, if I picked a category, I could get multiple polls, so I used a grid view, because I want to see a table of all those. Here. There's only going to be one poll that has a given ID. That's by definition. And therefore, I can put a details view. And that will show me one at a time. All right. Actually, I can page through them if there really were multiple, but it's going to show one at a time. And again, I can go and I can say what my data source is. And in this case, SQL data poll. Now, if I go and run this, I did not want to do that. I'm going to set this to start page. You may quibble with the formatting here because that's not particularly pretty formatting. But we can go and we can see the poll in the details view. Now probably... We want to do some formatting, you know, we want to stretch this out. We probably don't need to see the poll ID and the category ID. So I can go in and edit the fields and remove the category ID and remove the poll ID and just see the question. What did we pick? We picked autumn before. Let's stick with that theme. piece we wanted to do here. We wanted to show the, well, we want to show the percentages ultimately, but first 
the, the thing we want to do in this portion of it is we want to show the name of the category. Now, we were showing the category ID before, but that's really not enough, right? Because who knows what category 1 means? Who knows what category 3 means? All right, we want to show the name of the category. Now, the name of the category is in another table. All right? Now, there's a couple ways that we can handle this. All right? I'm going to handle it by joining the tables. I'm going to give you a warning. Later on in this course, when we write code to maintain tables, we're going to want to do it a little bit different way. But for now, since all we're doing is displaying, we can go in and we can simply join the tables together. Well, how do you join the tables? There's actually a couple ways that you can do that. I'm going to go in. Again, what do I need to change here? The data source or the grid? I actually need to change both, right? Because I'm currently not pulling the category name, right? So i got to pull the category name in the query before I can use it. Then I need to change the details view to display the category name. So in this case, the change I'm making affects both of them. I don't have the data, so I have to get it. And, uh, and, and since I don't have it, I'm not displaying it, so I have to display it. So I'll go in here and configure data source. Now there's a couple ways you can do a join and we'll explore them. The simplest one, the way that I teach in 143, is using uh, a where clause. And I can say select from poll, comma, category. where poll ID equals question mark and category category ID equals poll dot category ID. You need to join it regardless of the fact that I define that as a foreign key. All right. You might think, gee, why do I even have to go that? Well, you do. All right. You have to tell it how to match up the rows in one table with the rows in the other table. So how do I know if I look at the database? How do I know what poll or what category belongs to what poll? Well, I take the poll ID in the category table and look it up in the category table. Or I take the poll, the category ID in the poll table, rather, and look it up in the category table. Yeah, all right. Say it one time, slow. Uh, yeah. So in other words, question three has a category ID of one. So what's the name associated with it? Well, I hop over to the category table and look. Category ID of one corresponds to technology. All right. That's effectively what I'm doing with the SQL statement. I'm saying... I want to grab everything from poll and category, where the poll ID equals a question mark, just like it did before. And I want to match up the category ID with the poll ID. What happens if I don't do that? What happens if I don't do that is this. It shows me the same poll six times. Why six times? Why did it do it six times in this case? Should only do it once, but why did it do six times? Once for each category. Put differently, I didn't tell the database how to match up category and poll. So what did it do? It matched up every category. Uh, it matched up the poll with every category because it doesn't know how to match it up otherwise. So it gave me, well, and this is called in database terms a cross product. Everything from the one table matched up with everything from the other table. Now, in this case, it's not everything, but the selected poll, it matches up with every category. What we need to do is we need to do 